Welcome to the OpenShift Working Group Documentation Subgroup meeting for February 8th. Uh, the link to the notes is in the meeting chat. If you could put your name in the attendance section so we know who was here and who was, um, uh, was available to hear some of the information being discussed, and that helps us to know maybe if someone wasn't here that we need to reach out uh, for something that was discussed uh, that relates to something that working on. And uh, take a quick second to look over the agenda and let me know if there's anything that you want to change. And again, this is our February 8th, 2022 meeting. <clears throat> No, nope, it looks good to me. Let me get the code of conduct in here. There, that was the only thing I was going to ask about. So there's one thing I need to add. Okay, anyone else have any uh, suggestions, uh, modifications to the agenda? Sounds like folks are good with it. So um, let's start out with I current just projects. A quick oh, question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are, are we going to talk about the uh, you know operators at all? Yes, uh, I'm, we will I'm be thinking... talking about operators. That is down, um, let's see, I think it's in, it should be in here, if it's not. Good. Yeah, so there's a new subgroup for operator cat catalog. Uh, that's the third item, or second, or third item. Yes, third item. So we will be talking about that. Uh, okay. Nice. All right. Uh, keeping the dev Slack channel. Uh, Vadim signed off the other day on um, uh, basically we can get rid of it or fold it in, but there's really nothing to fold in. Yeah. So um, it, are we going to yeah. rename? Are we going to rename the user one to OpenShift dash OKD, or are we just going to keep OpenShift dash user? That was. I, I, I think that's a question for this group to decide right now. So it, okay. it wasn't. We had a variety of opinions, and I think it was depending on if if Vadim did sign off on closing the the dev one. So Vadim is more than happy to do that. Um, uh, El Miko uh, left. Basically, everyone's been bailing out of the channel except for me and a handful of other folks. So there's really no one even there. Okay. Um, so that would be the question for this group: is what to name the other Slack channel that is currently OpenShift users, or keep it the same? What do people think? The only thing, I, the caveat I would have is now that I've been away for two weeks and come back, I'm not sure we can rename and not lose the history. Um, so if if there is a history that's important to people there and if the Kubernetes folks say um, changing the name changes the, is it basically creating a new one and losing the history in that, um, then probably sticking with OpenShift dash users is probably a good thing. I'm just, and I don't know the answer to that question, but that that popped into my head while I was on vacation. Yeah, good question. If that's not the case, I think it's good to get the name OKD exposed. So, yeah, and, and do we care about the history there? That's not really. I mean, it's an it's an ephemeral platform anyway. Really, no, I don't know anyone that really goes back to look for stuff. Yeah, well, do we actually have history? 
do, does someone pay to keep the history? Because if you have a normal account, you don't have this having a look now. It seems that like someone does because it does go back quite a while. Yeah, it it might. So that's that's the only thing I. These are the things when you're on a hike and you're not supposed to be thinking about work <laughs> that, that pop in your head. Um, and that that's so I will ask that question and if of the Kubernetes admin folks for that channel. Um, and if it is that it has history that is semi-important. The other thing is that if we change the name, we might lose the subscribers to people who are already in that channel. So that's what was beating, you know, the history and people who are already in it. So um, I will ask that question. Um, and if we don't lose either of those things, um, changing it to OKD, is that the proposal? Uh, OpenShift-OKD. Right. Well, I, mean, I think one of the questions to ask is, is there actually any OpenShift support provided in the channel? Because by calling it OpenShift, you'd be sort of giving the impression that there is OpenShift. So if you did have a, a, a customer, OCP customer, mm -hmm. would they be, expect to get responses from that channel? I Personally, I, I like the idea of having OKD in the name it, it, to, to actually show it. Um, but whatever we do, I think we need clarity. Because, um, I mean, the, the, the sort of strap line is discussion of OpenShift installation and usage queries, sorry, questions, issues. Yeah. And we actually tell them for OKD, go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. So we do know that Mike, Andrew Sullivan, and a handful of other folks frequent that channel helping folks out. Whether mm -hmm. that's in their official capacity as Red Hat employees is not clear to me. Maybe Diane has more insight into that. It, it's, or... a it, it's always a spare time thing. Um, okay. But I, I, I do think there are a number of OpenShift customers that go there um, and that they, you know, so, and it's not a bad thing in my opinion. Um, it gives it gives branding from a Red Hat perspective to OpenShift in the Kubernetes space that we like to have. Um, so sharing that one channel with um, OpenShift and OKD is, in my mind, optimal. Um, and then we only have one stop shopping, and we do get some recognition that OKD is there. I'm wondering, uh, and I haven't done the research, um, if we look at something like Rancher and K3S, are there two separate channels? Is there a Rancher channel in Kubernetes? Does anyone have Kub the, the channel uh, open? Yeah, I can look real quick, or if someone else has it open, do it. Yeah, I just on the Kubernetes and I. Does that? There is a Rancher channel. Yeah. And K3S is its own project, so there should be a K3S one there. So that's the separation of duties. And OKD probably will never be a, a CNCF project. There isn't, a separate, there isn't a separate K3S. There isn't. As a matter of fact, if you look at the Rancher channel, it says all things Rancher related, including Rancher subprojects like K3S. Yeah. So, we'll, so, so we could well, also ch change what's in the description, too, in the header. Right. So does it make sense to keep it OpenShift? Since OKD is OpenShift and OCP is OpenShift, does it make sense to keep it OpenShift users and just change the description, as, as Diane mentioned, to just say discussion of OCP and OKD and all other installation issues, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and all other flavors of OpenShift that we make up as we go along. Because then we're not committed to it so much because we are trying to direct people to use the discussion mm -hmm. uh, in Git uh, for stuff so that there's a searchable grouped history on topics and things like that um, and tagging and whatnot. So we can also uh, maybe we don't spend too much time on this, you know, and, and focus more on our getting yeah. people to the place where we want them. And we can also put a link to the discussions for OKD in the description at the header. I think it is. Is, is it there? I'm, I'm popping around now. Uh, it yes, it is. Yep. I think we said for OKD specific help, which maybe Makes there's a better way of phrasing that. Yeah. Oh, it looks like I have edit capabilities on that. Um, so I can edit as we wish. So do I, actually, it turns out. So 
Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, so the question would be to the admins. Um, yeah, and I put that in the docs. Does changing it lose the history, and does it lose membership if we were to change them? But before we even have to ask that, what is Strapol vote changing the name? Yay or nay? Sounds good. You think changing the name? Yeah, yeah there's... If changing the name, there's 2,894 2, members. If changing the name loses those members, then no. Um, but do we want to, if, if regardless of that aspect, do people want to? Is there a need or desire to change the name? Not the description, but the name. Um, I, and what would I you guess, want to do? I guess the discussion is, do we want people using that channel for OKD? And are we going to have people that are going to track it and respond? If the answer is yes, I think we want OKD in the name. If the answer is no, we prefer people to follow the link and go to the discussions forum, as we have in the description, then we possibly want people to, to not have OKD in the name. Well, don't forget we have Matrix now too, which is like, OK, so now we have another I want to know why we're doing that as well. <laughs> it's because, well, it's because so much of the Fedora community is moving, and I okay. think that that's it's to try to be on par with our Fedora core OS underpinnings and and okay. with that community as well. Because um, I tried to log, I tried to follow the link to log in there, and it told me that my domain wasn't supported. Oh. Well. So, again, anything that has a barrier to entry. So, I mean, if the Fedora community are there and we want to support them, I think that's good. But trying to get new people to have to fight sign up processes to yeah. see stuff and get questions isn't a good idea. So, I think part, part yeah. of me is, is this is just um, if there's something on the topic that we want to rewrite that um, in some way. Obviously, Jamie and I both can edit the topic and the, descript the description. Um, we can we can do that because back in 2070, Sarah and I did this. So I'm not saying that it doesn't. But I can't see any way to um, change the name. You can only archive. Um, so I think our discussion about changing the name is kind of moot. Um, yeah. It's kind of moot. Oh, it's not in the settings tab. Yeah. So we could leave it open shift users, get them to um, archive the other one, which is, or, or I think I can archive it, or Jamie could archive it, but I think we'll ask the admins and let them know we're doing it. Um, and leave yeah, it as nice it is. To, it'd be nice if you could merge the history of the other one into this one, yeah. yeah it's not well, gonna that's not going <laughs> to. Right. Yeah, I don't know that there's much in the dev at this point, though. Right. In, in terms of the, the topic, um, the actuality is not quite as black and white as we're suggesting in the topic because uh, there's a lot of OKD stuff which is identical to OCP. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, Vadim will, uh, you know, if it seems that way to him, he will suggest, uh, you know, moving a bug report to the OCP. You know, Bugzilla or whatever, and okay. and so uh, some of the OCP discussion would also be useful to OKD users, you know, slash admin people. So maybe the maybe the this actually is, if there's maybe there's a better way than dash OKD dash specific, but maybe the description actually is okay, or the topic actually is for the most part correct. You know what I mean? It's like if you want something specific to OKD, go to the discussions. If you want, yeah. if it's something that could be solved by either of them, this is as good a place as any. I don't want to spend too much because we're 17 minutes into the meeting. I don't want to spend yeah. too much time so, on this uh, anymore. And I don't know, I'm, I've been sharing my screen. So I think um, we also, someone, whether it was Jamie or Vadim, mentioned in the description for a dash dev um, that it was being depreciated. So I think what we do is we give it a month um, and then archive the sucker. And that way we don't lose any members. We keep these, um, and then maybe I can periodically go into the dev and just put a reminder: please migrate over over the next month. Every you know, once every Friday while I'm having coffee, um, 
remind people to move to dash dev and then at the end of the month get the kubernetes folks to um, archive it so that people will just move over to dash users right yeah, yeah. exactly so um, I think what I'm putting on the table is leave it as is um, and the depreciation notice is in the dev write up and then if I go in and you know periodically um, say hey this is being depreciated at the end of the month it will be archived boom uh, maybe I'll edit the the dev one saying it's going to be archived at on what is it, February 28th the last day of the month and then go for that and then we can move on in the agenda Jamie if that works for folks straw poll vote show of hands does that work works for me okay. all right excellent let's move on now to our next uh, item here, which is the code of conduct, uh, I did send an email out reminding folks one more time that the deadline for comments is February 15th. Um, this brings up an interesting question. Sandra brought it up, and it, it actually relates to a couple of things we have on the table, which is that, um, uh, Diane, you can go ahead and end your screen sharing, and then that way. Yep, yep. Uh, we talked about this before, contact email addresses. And what our what are our options for contact email addresses related to OKD? So can do we have Diane the ability to ask that the MX for OKD.io point to a mail system that we can use? The MX records, which are for folks who aren't familiar, MX records are like the DNS records that say where a domain gets its email services from. Yes, but um, I think I'm sure we, we could figure it out. We're all technical enough to figure out how to get that um, working. I think what, um, from my understanding of codes of conduct and the person to contact, that needs to be um, usually that is someone in the legal department. It is not, um, or it is a, a jointly held email address. Let me, I, I'll have to think about it because I wasn't thinking about having um, a contact person. That's always been the sticking point is who's going to answer and who's going to adjudicate um, and manage all of the, um, any, if anyone has an issue. Um, so I think what we really need is some, is a, yeah, I, I don't have a good answer. Okay. I'm putting this in as a task for you then. Yeah, thank you. Um, and. I, th I think it could be, we could have like chair at okd.io and it could go to all, you know, Jamie and myself and, and Vadim and we'd all get notified. Um, it has to be confidential too. So there's, there's something. So I will ask the legal team. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And uh, so there's basically that. Once we solve that, and unless we get any other um, uh, requests to, to modify the document, then it, it can go up on the website after the 15th. Uh, next topic, new subgroup for operator catalog. Um, where do we, my first question is, where do we want to collate this information? We were talking about organizing our catalog, um, operator catalog efforts and the research we were going to do about what control we have. Do we want to do this in the HackMD, or do we want to do it as a discussion item in the repo, or where do, you, where do folks want to do this work? I'm, don't we just need to have a, a a call or a meeting or a discussion to find? Because I think from the, the couple of meeting a couple of discussions we've had, the big sticking point is: are we able to do anything around this? Or, or is it all going to be done within the Red Hat dev teams? Right. And right. Is there anything for us to do with this respect? And I guess until we know that answer, if, if the so, answer is it's all going to be done inside Red Hat, then there's nothing for us to do. So um, I, I think if we're not, if okay, taking the working group stuff aside, I think we should answer this question in a document, whether we know the answer is going to be yes or no, because it keeps coming up. So maybe we do do this as a discuss. We do do. Uh, maybe we do this as a discussion item in the repo, so that when people ask the question, there are already we can point them to that. 
there are already issues open around the or, like for the general question about the catalog there's the one that's that's that Christian opened that has the list of the individual operators but do we have anything that's sort of a, a collating ticket or issues I'll, I'll tend to use that one okay put every everything and operator under that one issue because that way we have a history of how it's evolved and sure all right fair mm -hmm. enough it's... All right, then that's what we will do. Put a little note here in the stuff. Use Christian's ticket, which I don't actually have. Uh, Christian's issue, which I don't have in front of me. Someone has the address on that. Okay, uh, moving on. Reworking the OKD base repository. Um, Brian, do you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the conversations that we've been having? Yeah, so we've been having a conversation, um, and I mean, the, 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 the gist of it is that we need a good README on the OpenShift main repo. It's primarily going to be used for coalesc coalescing issues and discussions, and all, I mean, the way Vadim put it is, all document-worthy content should be either in docs.okd.io or okd.io, the community site. So we want to move all sort of documentation guides from that repo into our documentation. Um, I, I think that's where we come to. We sort of finished that conversation just this afternoon, or if you're in this morning, if you're West Coast based or. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's the way to go. Um, so it, it does actually bring up the question about technical documentation, because the only place that really is, is the sort of notes that Vadim's put together in that OKD repo. Um, and I, I guess I have a question for the, the wider group is, is this something that we feel that we want to do and want to support? I mean, I've had a couple of looks at thinking about building a custom, could I build OKD from source, for example? If I wanted to change the operator catalog, can I build that part of the distribution myself from source? And I very quickly came to the, to the conclusion that I don't have enough information with what's in the current repos, and the amount of time I'd need to spend to figure it out was just too much. I just didn't have that amount of spare time. So I, I think that that is a question that um, this brings up for me. If we start looking at the the content that Jamie's that um, Vadim sorry put in the OKD, it gives a shell of the sort of activity he does to pull a release together, but not enough to actually allow somebody to replicate that work. And is that something that we want to fill out and build out that top technical documentation? And um, so somebody could effectively go to GitHub and build OKD from scratch. I don't know if that's even feasible. I, I know there's a lot of um, infrastructure within Red Hat that is used to do that build. Is that something we can document and effectively get someone to reproduce? Or is that just going to be a massive, massive bit of work and it's not worth the investment in that that, that work. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think you raised a bunch of really good questions. Uh, like, I, I guess I would say that in principle, uh, if uh, we're claiming to be supporting open source, then it should be possible for an interested uh, third party to build it from the source. Um, and at the point that Red Hat was an independent uh, company, uh, they always supported open source. And I haven't heard that changing on paper anyway, uh, since they were acquired by IBM. Uh, so I'm guessing that that still is the case, at least somewhere in Red Hat. And the, uh, the issue of whether or not it is feasible to do that or if there are things that are um, completely tied to internal Red Hat infrastructure that are impossible to duplicate outside, that's really a Red Hat question that we can't answer, uh, although we could ask. But, but I, th I think that that would be worth uh, 
I, I guess, trying to sort of, uh, you know, answer the question one way or the other, given that uh, it would be a desirable thing to be able to do, you know, to build from source. Uh, and the, uh, I, I guess, in, you know, this is sort of going back, you know, to, uh, you know, sort of the new foundations uh, and uh, you know, Richard Stallman and all of those sorts of things, but the the uh, the basis of trust is that you can, you know how you get to the binaries, you can read the code if you have an infinite army to do that, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I think that that's still worth supporting. Uh, like I would be interested in building it from the source were it possible. Uh, that, that's something that I frequently do with the tools that I use. And I, th I think that it would be helpful if we, you know, riffing on what you said, Bruce, you know, if, we, if we're saying to the community that, okay, this is an open source project, if we can at least provide enough of the information minus the Red Hat specific details, maybe folks can fill in the blanks with their own technologies. You know, like, okay, so if, we're, if they're using Prow or whatever internally and, and we wouldn't have access to that, well, you, they can do their own Prow or they can do whatever else to fill in those gaps. You know, so having documentation up to that point is good. And I also think it's important because, you know, and I've mentioned this before, even early on, having Vadim be the single sort of, um, like everything resting on Vadim's shoulders is probably not a great idea for a community yeah. project, right? And I know that they have now moved things under, so OKD is like an official upstream now, but that still doesn't change it. it at least in my mind, I, I haven't seen anything change where Vadim yeah. has any less sort of of that Response. weight on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be wonderful for someone external to have you know that a capability, and at some point, Vadim will get promoted out of that position, hopefully for his career, and we will have to retrain somebody else. And so, anything we can do to document it better, um, even if it is a red hatter that we slot back in. Not that he, you know, not that he's not getting promoted recent, soon, but you know that happens. It's part of the process here. So, the better documentation we have, the you know, the more useful it will be when that transition does happen. And Vadim, if you're listening. Yeah, hopefully you will get that, whatever career bump it is for doing all this wonderful work. And anyone else who's listening, he deserves it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. right. um, okay, so I think, you, so Brian, what, what, do you, what would you suggest as next steps then? What do you, what so do you I, mean, I think what we need to do, and again, I, I look for suggestions how we do this, we do need to pull together that community of, I think, exclusively Red Hatters at the minute that have that knowledge um, to create a technical documentation section within the OKD.io. Um, as I say, we're, we're going to move it out of the repo as we as we transition the OKD.io repo. Um, I think what's there is, is a useful insight, but it's not sufficient if anybody wanted to go and do that and, and, and make use of that information. So I, I think, now I know that we had the, the document work sessions in the past, um, where we had like a hack hack day or whatever. I don't know whether we do that. We, we we try and do it just by asking for volunteers or contributions, and um, even if it's just bullet points and and this team then takes on the job of turning it into prose and 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 and, 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 and tidying it up. But I think it's going to have to come from initially the red hat people because they are the only ones that have the knowledge as far as I'm aware um, in, in terms of how all this works and what are the missing pieces and um... so I have a call once a week with um, Chris Alfonso who is the runs the engineering manages the engineers what I I'll bring it up um, with him this week uh, or I'll just reach out to him right now um, and ask him Maybe, because I don't want to burden um, the team anymore, but maybe if there's a new engineer that is, could go through, can you pop the in the chat the URL to what's there now? So I have that and I could just send an email to Chris Alfonso and ask him if there's a newbie or someone that sh can shadow him 
um, and then um, and and see if we can get um, some red hatters to do that before we um, like try and set up a hackathon to hack on it first um, and see what what Chris comes up with because Chris he may have somebody already that he's in training or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'll, I'll pop it in, but it is actually the main OKD repo, um, which is github.com openshift slash OKD. And if you go in there, you'll see things like the troubleshooting section. That actually tells talks about the OS tree type stuff. Um, there is something um, in the readme, in, in the main readme, which does talk a little bit about but it, it, it's all within that one repo, the OKD main repo. Okay. But there, well, there's there is... also, oh, what, what I was going to say is there is also the repo that has the machine config operator stuff that is actually sort of the OKD install. That's a separate repo, correct? Yeah, and, and, and I, this is one of the problems that when once you start at the OKD main repo, to actually work out what you need to build it. And it's how many of these other um, repos within the o o within the OpenShift organization, and there are 623 of them, by the way, which of those 623s do I actually need to start looking at to work out how I do all this stuff? How do they interlink? Um, and, and you suddenly get that it's, it's a problem that's too big for one person just to actually sit through in, in their spare time. So, and, and probably some of them, like the, the uh, some of this may go back to OCP, because uh, you know if there's a, a, a an operator that OKD uses which isn't changed, then there isn't going to be any OKD, uh, you know, diffs or anything like that that you're going to see. So you'd have to go back to the README for that now. Uh, yeah, because, uh, uh, you know, there are other sort of mega projects, like if you look at uh, uh, Wildfly, uh, then, uh, you know, that application server is uh, tons of modules, but there is a sort of master make file that goes through and, and uh, builds everything. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's sort of a technology, like a, uh, maybe an OCP issue rather than an OKD issue. But uh, again, I, I don't know, like I, I, I look at it, but it's been about a year and I got stopped pretty instantaneously. So yeah, I, think we, I, I we feel both your frustration. This, yeah, I think we both have the same experience. So I'm, I'm happy to help coordinate, but I just don't have the, the technical knowledge um to actually do this but i i actually do think we do need a technical section which explores some of this and i think this will then also feed into the operator discussion because it may be that red hat will do um through through their sort of engineering their, their product they will produce something and then we use information the technical section to say if this isn't what you want if you want to add additional ones or if you want to change the version that's shipped. This is how you would go and create your own catalog and, 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 and cut your own version of the of the the catalog. So can um, I just ask for a clerk? I just want to make sure I'm asking Chris Alfonso for the right thing here. Because um, I hear two words that I, in my brain, and it's, are, are, is the build process for building the release is one whole thing yeah. that isn't really well documented. And then the, when you want to go and install it um, on some target cloud or hardware, those are two separate tracks. And so when I was asking about yeah. um, the link there, the link go, it's all intertwined, um, interlinked yes. within, within the documentation. So, yes. Pri so prior I, prioritizing that, um, so the build process first and then the install or? Yeah, and there's actually a way we can approach this. So let me let me sort of. Um, I reached out to Vadim, and he gave me the URL. I was trying to find the right repo, and I found it. I put the link in the meeting notes. We don't necessarily have to get any external people involved yet 
what, the, what we can do is have a day where we go through that repo and go through the machine content um, process there. I've actually gone through those scripts before. I didn't document what I found or how it all works, but that is the stuff that puts OKD specific content onto a cluster. And everything else then comes from OpenShift. So what my suggestion would be is before we even get anyone else involved, let's ourselves, those of us who are interested in the engineering part, go through this together and write up some notes so we better understand what we're talking about to ask the right questions of other people. Yeah. That makes sense? Think, thank you. That makes perfect and wonderful. So that's the OKD machine OS. That's, that's it right there. And if you look at... Um, uh, there's uh, the overlays and the manifests are sort of the key points uh, of uh, uh, to look at, right? And then it actually shows you where the Fedora Core OS um, gets built using the assembler uh, there. Uh, and so this repo has it all, actually. Okay. In terms of OKD. But but just just to go back to your to your question, and Diane, I I think the the install we've got covered because we've already got the guides and we've got the official install within the docs. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think the install we have largely got covered. There may be a slightly different if you build it yourself. I don't know whether we actually create the right assets to plug into that process. But I think that that one I see as a, we've largely got that covered in the OKD.io. There is some of that content in the in the OKD and that's overlap. And I think most of it's out of date. It's been superseded with the work that Al Nico did in the OKD.io. Um, what we don't have anywhere other than what's in the OKD is the technical documentation, which is about building and customizing a release of OKD. So to me, that's that's what we're talking about here. It's that it's that technical dev, which I'm guessing is what originally the Slack channel that we're closing down was meant to be for, but we've never really got there, so. So, so if we set up a time, we, maybe we, we can bring this up at the next next week's meeting, Jamie, um, to review the um, this, machine OS repo and make sure that it's sufficient and maybe the read needs a little deeper. Um, I'm happy to host it, um, a separate meeting for it, whomever, and, and do that. Um, so if we can add it to the agenda next week and see if if you think that's right. And then um, in my weekly meeting with um, Chris Alfonso and a few other folks, um, I will see if I can um, just plant the seed um, and see if there are Red Hat, if there is a backup plan for Vadim and who those people are um, who might come and, and, and be part of that as well. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't want to make an ask, as Jamie points out, before we know what we're asking. And that's what's, yeah. yeah. So let's. So I'll add it to the agenda of the next main meeting, and then we'll go from there. I've added an added a action item for myself uh, to do that. So, and I'm, uh, can I yeah. just, I'm just going to ask one question. Michael Burke, who's been listening in quietly here, um, is there any section of the OCP um, documentation that is about building from scratch? No. Is, there, is that internal? So. There's nothing. It's just using Probably it. Some in, internal. Is there internal stuff? Are you aware of that? It's got to be something. It's got to be somewhere, but it's not anything the documentation is is managing. Is it correct? You you not don't you're not aware of it. Okay. Oh, we'll see. <coughs> got to be there somewhere. Got to be somewhere. Hopefully. I'll take. A, I'll look around. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on now to uh, presentation template. Uh, does anyone need to, Diane, just for clarity, does anyone need to weigh in on the OKD presentation template? Like we can just do whatever we want. 
you can, you know, as long as you are using the right logo um, mm -hmm. and you don't change, I think, the message, um, the tagline, um, you can make it as cartoony or high tech or matrix like or whatever you want. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah. And we are, yeah. Go, go for it. If you guys want to do a makeover on the template and create a new template, Bob's your uncle. All right, let's put a due date of the meeting of the 23rd for folks to look at Sandra's uh, template, and um, then we will decide uh, at that point to sort of sign off on it as version 1.0, mm -hmm. and then version it from then from uh, then forth, henceforth. Uh, and um, the, I guess the thing is, is so, is this something we would want to store in Git or just keep it as a Google presentation? Or uh, what Jimmy, do we want to do? Uh, I just clicked on the link and uh, it says I need access. Yeah, Sandro mentioned that. So, like, uh, apparently, um, um, we need right, to figure out how to make not, it uh, public. Yeah, we need to find a way to make it completely public. Um, right. I need a public account. Up, uh, like, I've, I've actually got his template uh, yeah. under one of my. Uh, tabs. It's just a matter of finding it, but uh, I just decided I'd try clicking on the link again and see if that worked. Yeah, so it's uh, a very small theme. It's just like four different basic slides. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but uh, yeah, I don't. Uh... It's Sandro might have to recreate it using his Gmail account as opposed to right. his Red Hat account. Yeah, I believe so. Because I guess I'm just saying that uh, if we can't, if nobody can actually see it, it's going to be sort of hard well, to get I comments. Well, I can see it. Uh, so I don't you know should be able now to see it. Uh, I hit the button for sharing it. Refresh okay. and try again. But, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll try I, to transfer I, under no, the overt organization. It may be possible. I've got that... it now. I've got it now. Oh, you can see it now, Brian? Okay. Okay, yeah, I still can't, so that's sort of interesting. Let me refresh again. Nope. Are you signed into Google, Bruce, at all? Uh, like yeah, I'm, I'm signed in with my uh, uh, Gmail uh, That's weird. account. Um, Maybe it's because you're Canadian. No, oh, could, be, could be. Could <laughs> be. Maybe try again uh, requesting access. There should be a button there for requesting yeah, access. Yeah, yeah, there, there is. Okay. Okay. So, well, let's uh, do that for now, but I mean, ultimately, we'll want to work out the... Uh, the, the access issue and the versioning, do we want to keep it as a Google presentation and just keep, you know, because you can look at versions and the version history and rely on that. Is that safe? Are folks comfortable with that? Or would you rather something more tightly controlled? What do folks think? Um, if somebody wants to use it, are they more likely to use it on the laptops? Or from Google Docs? I mean, when you do presentations, do you trust Google Docs to be there and available at the conference center, given a lot of conference Wi-Fi um, isn't always the most reliable. Because I'm, I'm guessing at the end of the day, this is going to be used to give presentations, whether we're yeah. standing face to face at a conference or a virtual conference. So. If it no, may help, the usual way I use this one is creating a PDF out of the presentation when I'm done and just going away with the PDF. And you can make it available for offline as well in yep. Google Docs. So, um, okay. yeah. All right. And so now, again, so the by the 23rd, uh, any types of changes that you want to that basic template, uh, let us know. And then we also should, off of that template, and maybe off of that version that was floating around of like a full presentation, come up with like the basic OKD presentation about what it is, what it does, yep. and stuff like that. That's down the road, though, I'm sure. Because yep. someone's going to have to do that work. Uh, OK, issues. Uh, old site into the new repo. Um, well, we're sort of discussing that now in terms of the, the technical stuff. Well, no, I, I should update that ticket, though, probably with discussions from today. But wasn't this also about the actual community repo? Because we, yeah. we've got a community repo that has five documents in it, data yeah. members, owners, readme, and roadmap. 
Yeah, we're waiting for you, Diane, because you weren't at the last meeting where we oh. discussed this. It's the community repo, the one that you created that has the charter and everything. Retire it and move it over into OKD.io repo. Okay. It, so it's, I, it's fine to do that. Okay. Please. Um, yeah. Just get it all in one place. So we're going to yeah, move that into the OKD.io site, yeah? Is, is that what you want? Yeah, okay. Okay, and next up, the transition to Matrix. So Brian, you said you had a hard time getting in? Yeah, um, I, I couldn't sign up because it said my domain wasn't recognized or approved. I can't remember the exact wording. The domain of your email, email address? Was it my email address. Was it Gmail? Were you using your Gmail one or a corporate email address? It was it was my personal one, which is me.uk, or it was my Gmail. I can't remember which one I used. Well, but I it think was... it, there's, yeah. So I haven't even tried yet, so um, I will endeavor to do that too as well and, and do that. I, I haven't. So when when did it get set up and um, what is the URL to it? Is that in the, the meeting notes? and? It was in the phone meeting notes. Meeting. It was in the full meeting notes. Okay, we'll go back and take a peek. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, is there a, an admin for the matrix that you, it sounds like such a strange thing so to say. If is you actually go to the link there uh, in our current meeting notes, if you go to that GitHub issue, uh, there is a link to it uh, within there. And it should all be set up. Yeah, you need to go and download a client. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I this maybe this isn't the best thing. I mean, the idea was that since Fedora is so intimately, you know, interlinked in the work that we do and we want to support them and we want to get those folks engaged, that Matrix was the way to do it since they're all moving to Matrix. But I, if it's problematic to get people signed up and to get people in there, then maybe we need to rethink that. I'm, I'm, I'm at the, of the opinion, let's have one place and only one place. Sure. Now, I, I know that there are benefits of, if you're where the other people are, they're more likely to come and join you rather than go and look, look, look for you elsewhere. But if we're in Slack, if we're in Facebook, if we're on Twitter, if we're in Matrix, if we're in GitHub, it just means that unless we've got people in the community that are actively working there, and people are going to get frustrated and end up cross-posting everywhere, like like we've just been trying to shut down because yeah. there are responses. So if we're going there, then someone has to commit to be a regular reviewer. And yeah, um, yeah. Well, let's play with it and see what benefit it adds or detraction that it adds. We're not publicizing it all yet. Let's see yeah. if we can get some of us in there and play around and see. I'm not that familiar with Matrix myself, so. It'd be nice to get in and just play around and see what we can do. Yeah, I'm all for playing with new toys and um, seeing, you know, if this is going to take off. It, it may be our um, just our link to the Fedora Core OS conversations too. So, because I think they're reluctant to use Slack, um, so which for all kinds of good reasons. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Next up is. Um, so I talked about the the um, security liaison request. We talked about like trying to get someone to volunteer to help us with sec collate security stuff and and maybe write something up that we can provide the community since there's lots of security issues popping up. I have a link to my uh, just a very simple one. Um, if folks want to go ahead and put comments in there, um, then we'll sign off on it in the next couple days. Um, async. Uh, this also has the issue of who do they contact? Who do we tell them to send an email to? Yeah. Um, what what are, what are people's thoughts on this? Are, Diane, are you saying that we don't want to, for under any circumstances, try to get OKD email um, uh, as a thing? Um, no, I'm, I'm not saying that yet. I just, um, while you were talking, I sent an email to the legal team to ask them what the, what the, 
advice was on who should receive those things because they do there is some confidentiality stuff mm -hmm. um, for the code of conduct um, so we can we can figure out if we can create a okd.io mail server somewhere but um, let's let's get the code of conduct one done the security one um, I think we already have has for security um, but it's a different a different question for security because it's since it's not a supported product by Red Hat. Well, no, but this is this is who do they contact to get to the working group to let them know that they're interested in being like a little doing some liaison volunteer work. Ah. So this is the other this is incoming to us to for someone to say hey, and this this will be for other volunteer things that we send stuff out asking for, right? If we ask for someone to be a whatever volunteer for looking for volunteers to do testing whatever like we would want some sort of we don't have any type of other mm -hmm. than the working group email address where people would have to join and become members we don't have an email address for addressing projects or anything like that yeah. um i don't have a great answer for you at the moment um okay that's why i set up the google group so that we would have a way to con get contacted. Um, yeah, but so I think you have to be a member to be able to 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 message it, right? Yep. So they yeah. would have to join the Google group and yeah. send a message, and that yeah. was part of join the Google group and get everybody in yeah. one place. So um, yeah. Well, let's do some investigative work on that because ultimately, I think for us to be successful, we need something that people don't have to join to be able to message us with whatever, you know, emotional things, partnership yeah. ideas, whatever. I'm yeah, no, I, I just joined the Matrix Fedora group, and, and it, it is slightly annoying, as usual, in that uh, um, you have to either, I guess, create an account or um, use, you know, Google or 50,000 other things with the SSO. Um, and then you have to create a username, and uh, yeah. it's like Discord or anything it's else. A, it's you, a, it's, you it's like to... all, it's like exactly. It's like all of those fifty thousand other things, and uh, it makes me want to uh, use IRC. <laughs> uh, so I'm um... uh, not sure if it will fit because, for example, for example, in Overt we are requiring to be registered on IRC as well. So you still need to be registered somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think, and that's the same with the Google group. I mean, it's a very light ask um, to join and the Google the, group. Yeah, and if you have a Fedora account, you should be able to set up cloaking, I think both in Matrix and IRC uh, for your Fedora. Uh, so yeah. um, it's, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. They're going to either have to join Fedora or join our Google group, yeah. which is what I think personally that joining the Google group is more transparent and more open than, you know, kick me if I'm wrong, than joining Fedora and creating a Fedora account. Um, it's a lighter ask to ask people to join the Google group than to sign up for Discord or Matrix or Slack or anything else. It's, it was, the, at the time, the lightest ask I could do. Um, and so I mean, right. well, let's play around and see what happens. Um, and uh, contact email, I guess we'll just find out like what our options are. Yeah, uh, there's the task list and then upcoming events, uh, as mentioned. Um, there is the uh, I see. Um, there's the GitOps uh, event tomorrow at, what is it, noon Eastern? Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. my time. Yeah. But, um, are you going to mention OKD at all in your GitOps talk? Um, yes, I mentioned OKD a uh, significant amount of times, yes. Okay, cool. Then I will make sure we capture that and um, reuse that content and get that up there somewhere Excellent. on the site. So, cool, thanks. Um, all right, well, that brings us down to the end of the meeting, folks. We've got our task list there. Um, I'll send a little reminder of the task list out probably um, next beginning of next week.
just so that folks can get uh, refreshed on what needs to be done. Any last minute comments or questions before we break uh, for the day? Uh, yeah, just quickly on that, uh, uh, I have a task list on looking to OpenShift book status. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, when uh, I quickly looked into it, uh, turns out that Red Hat owns the copyright to that. Mm. Uh, okay. Now, I don't, I don't know if Diane got herself up to speed on that, but th that issue was there. There's some old uh, uh, OpenShift uh, 3 uh, books that uh, sort of are O'Reilly books that uh, Red Hat gives you free PDFs to or something like that. Um, and uh, the uh, one of them anyway was I think by Shipley uh, and company and it seemed like it would be not that much work and useful to update them to uh, OKD. Um, and if I could it's get, very similar if I, to what, what I do anyway. All right, so if classes. I could get, get the source files for something like that, you'd be interested in creating- uh, I'd be interested in updating them, yeah. And so that they were OKD um, books versus OpenShift books. Is that that, that just, would be fine with me, yeah. Let's Let's it, take that offline because um, I think that's a really great idea um, and figure out how to do that. And since you're in Canada and nearby, we might be able to collaborate on that in real time. So right, that would be cool. Um, that would be very cool, cool to do something like that. Um, the, the, the one thing I'll say, and I, then we're going to run out of time uh, to say, um, getting a book published is an expensive endeavor. So if we did it as an open book that was just available online, um, a community hosted thing that would probably where we do well, we will probably never be given or find the money to publish an actual hard copy book uh, that is a marketing endeavor um, and cost I, I was just in a review of that and it's redonkulous how much they charge O'Reilly to print a book so um, aspirations of having an ISBM number and a hard copy are limited so hmm. but we'll see all right Thank you, everybody, for taking um, the time while I was away, and um, and I will catch up with everybody. But let's get that OKD book out there, Brian. That would be. And I'll stop recording now.